Welcome everybody to MJ Live. We are here every Thursday from night until 10 p.m. Or there's a bus. We always seem to go on late because people seem to enjoy the show, right? They enjoy the conversations. They enjoy the music, especially. And they also enjoy the training. So my name is Melissa Jade. And today we're talking with Aurel Ferguson, who is an artist. Hey, Aurel. Nice to have you here. Oh, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Great. I'm very, very excited to be here tonight. Awesome. Welcome, Michelle. Welcome, Faye. Welcome, Gary, Jenny, Amar, Amar uh, Veronica, and everybody else that's tuned in who I don't see. Sometimes I don't actually see everybody that's tuned in. But we're going to get started. So, Aurel, welcome to the show. And let the people know a little bit of your background. Like, where were you born? Where did you grow up? Before we get into the art. Well, actually, uh, believe it or not, I was born in Omaha, Nebraska. When I tell that to people, I say, my goodness, you might be the only one there in Nebraska. <laughs> but anyway, uh, from uh, my father, my father was in the Air Force, and that's how I ended up in Nebraska. Oh. And uh, both my parents were, um, my mother and father was from, they're from Jamaica. So I actually went to Jamaica when I was very young. Mm -hmm. And I left there when I was 10 years old. Okay. So my basic, uh, my basic bringing up was actually from in Port Antonio, Portland, mm -hmm. in Jamaica. Okay. Wow. And uh, what do you remember of those early years of actually being um, born over there? Well, to be honest with you, those were my happiest days. I, I remember um, playing outside in the yard. I remember playing marbles. I remember uh, going in the riverside. I remember catching crabs. I remember going out with my crocus bag and catching crabs. <laughs> Believe it. <laughs> and um, so you, you 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 went to uh, Nebraska at the age of ten. Is that correct? No, I went to Jamaica at the age. I left Jamaica at. I left Nebraska when I was like two years old, and I went to Jamaica and left Jamaica when I was 10 years old. I see. Got you. Yes. All right. So let me just make sure that I understand that. you were. Where were you born? I was born in Omaha, Nebraska. You were born in Omaha, Nebraska. You went to Jamaica at the age of two? Two years old. Two years old. Yes. And then you left Jamaica at 10. That is correct. And where did you go after that? Uh, from there, I went to Maryland. I actually... Uh, went to Maryland. Uh, we were at um, Andrews Air Force Base. And then from there, we left from there and we went to uh, Turkey, oh. uh, Adana, Turkey for uh, two and a half years. Okay. So, so I actually went to uh, three different high schools. Okay. And is it safe to say that you, you actually traveled to many more places without us going through all of them? You went to many more than that? Uh, well, I had the opportunity to... to uh, live in about maybe six other states okay. after that period. Okay. Out of all the states that you've lived in, before we come to, the, to, to, to Florida, what was your most interesting place that you lived? Uh, to be honest with you, I like Maryland of all the states I've been. Uh -huh. uh, Maryland was, although Maryland had some snow, it wasn't as bad as when I lived in New York. Oh. I lived in New York for a while, and I find that the, uh, I find also that the people in Maryland was a lot more, uh, they're not really Southern and they're not really uh, Northern, but they're more, uh, I just found that the people there was a much easier to get along with in Maryland. Okay, very, very good. Then what brought you to, at which point did you come to Florida then? <laughs> well, to be honest with you, I used to work uh, with a company called Kinney Shoes. Uh -huh. I did uh, I did 20 years with Kinney Shoes as a, a trainer. I used to train managers. Uh -huh. And uh, my my wife had family in Florida, and she always wanted to come here. Yes. And that's how I ended up, uh, they ended up transferring me uh, to Florida, and that's how I ended up in Florida. All right. How long ago was that? Uh, that would say, I would say that's about 20, uh, maybe 20 years ago. Actually, 20 years ago. Okay. Yeah. And uh, want to welcome Katrina and everybody else that's here. So we're here talking with Oral Ferguson. He's an artist. 
Let's get into the art now. When have you always been artistic? Uh, to be honest with you, I used to kind of dibble around when I was in school making those little stick man. But I actually felt I got more influenced by an artist in Jamaica called Herbie Rose. Right. He used to be an artist in uh, Antrovy, right on the outskirts of Port Antonio, Portland. And I remember as a child, I used to see his gallery. And I didn't really know or whether I'd pick it up or not, but it kind of came back to me eventually uh, as an influence right, uh, right. on artists. Right. Welcome to Naka. Good to have you. What 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 style of art was he then? Uh, he's more contemporary artist. Uh, he he did a lot of skylines, a lot of coconut trees, a lot of you know. But he's a well known artist, believe it or not. If you look him up, uh, Herbie Rose, you'll yeah. find that he was very famous in Port Antonio, Portland. Okay, I'll have to I'll definitely have to look look him up. Yeah. All right, now your your style of art is 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 quite unique um is there any to your knowledge is there anybody else that does your type of art to be honest with you i haven't run into anyone that's doing the same type of art that wow. i'm doing so you and are quite unique thank you very much i know that um it just kind of fell in my lap to be honest with you uh i would say probably um maybe a little over 20 years ago a mirror fell off my wall and it just shattered on the, uh, it was tile. And as I was actually sweeping it up, I saw something that looked like a hand in all those broken pieces. <laughs> and I picked it up and that's kind of how I got started. Uh, to let everybody know, I never went to school. I, I'm self-taught and uh, I'd start assembling these pieces of glass together. And I left it for uh, quite a few years. And I think when I was going back and forth to Maryland to see my parents and my sister, my sister keep telling me a couple of her friends was asking her about a piece I made for her. Mm -hmm. And I still kind of played it down. And then one day she said to me that somebody said, uh, don't be uh, don't be surprised if somebody come in and steal that piece from you. <laughs> and uh, all of a sudden I came back and I started, to be honest with you, I started last year, early last year to start making some more pieces. So that's kind of how I said, well, this is what I'm gonna do. So that's wow. what I've been doing for the last year and a half now. Year and a half, okay. And for those who may have missed it, you said a mirror. It was a mirror that fell off the, off the wall? Yes, it was a mirror. It was and, a mirror and, that, I don't know if anybody ever put up a mirror but didn't put it up properly. Uh -huh. uh, but sometimes if you don't put up, uh, could be a picture, could be anything, mm -hmm. sometimes it will fall off. Mm -hmm. In my case, it fell off and that's kind of how I got started. Wow. Yeah. We are going to share some of your pieces. And I don't know, can you, can you see the screen? Can I can you? actually, I can see that. You can. Okay, very good. So we're going to go through a few of the pieces, and this is um, looks like somebody somebody walking with a a bag or something of the sort. Could you describe this piece? Actually, that is a person bowling. Oh, oh uh, that's yeah. a person. Uh, that's uh, I was sitting down one day, and I used to bowl. I still bowl. I haven't bowled in maybe about four years, uh -huh. but I actually. Um, it just came to me to create someone bowling. And that's um, very um, abstract. Uh -huh. uh, some people have said uh, somebody walking, uh, you know, you can actually determine, uh, make your own interpretation of that piece, but it actually was intended for somebody bowling at a bowling alley. And, and that's what I like about your pieces. They, they do uh, lend themselves to be interpreted in how you want them to be interpreted so to me it was somebody holding a handbag you actually uh, designed it as bowling but it could be it could be whatever it is that's in your mind right that is that is so true and uh, just to before i forget tonight i want to let everybody know that on all these glass i never ever cut a glass wow everything was, you have to actually pick the pieces out from all the shattered pieces oh. that's what make it so unique and so different because you have to use the imagination of the angles and that's what's different about it. People look at it and say, well, 
how long did it take you to cut those pieces? I have never cut a piece out. Wow. And the day I have to cut a piece out, that's the day I'm not going to make pictures Ooh, anymore. Oh, wow. That, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty amazing because you want that to be, you want it to be completely authentic and just natural. The way, they, is, the way they're broken is the way you put them together. That's it. That's it. Okay. You got it. We're going to go through a few more here. And uh, decided to, to switch screens over here because that one, I was looking away a little bit. Let's uh, do this one more time. Okay. So this one, this one looks like it's uh, something of the times we're living in right now. Yeah, that's a uh, COVID one I kind of created there. I wanted to um, um, kind of leave something for history. Uh, that's kind of similar to the one I did when they had the uh, Bahama, that hurricane. I did one. Uh, this one here was a person fighting off the COVID. And um, I didn't really have too many uh, stained glass with this one because I wanted to project something a lot more positive uh, in terms of the, the mirror itself. Uh, when I first started off in terms of making these pictures, it was actually used with mirrors only. I used to love making the pictures with a, a dark background that the mirror could actually reflect. And this one here is kind of going back to what I did earlier last year. And this is the uh, fighting off the COVID uh, and leaving a history here. And, that's, uh, so, that's so, that's so um, appropriate for now. Um, we're having a few people that are giving, giving you comments, and uh, I'd like to share some of those with you. So okay. Tina, Tina's here. Welcome, Tina. She says, nice. Paula Scott's here. Welcome, Paula. How you doing? She said, abstract, you know, really quite nice. And, okay. um, and uh, Chinaka says, yes, <laughs> beat it. <laughs> and the coronavirus, you know, so it's pretty mm -hmm. interesting. Michelle Moore, very nice work. And... Uh, Paul, Paul is also saying, so talented. Love each of your pieces. Um, awesome, awesome Im uh, imagery. Aurel uh, says, Faye. Faye's call, dialing in or watching from the UK right now. Wow. I, I just wanted to also kind of point out that uh, since we have uh, Paula Scott there, she's been one of my biggest supporters. Oh, yes. And in terms of, uh, you know, she appreciated the art, and I just wanted to give her a shout out now that she's on. Absolutely. Paula Scott always supports you. All right. Let's go into uh, the next one here. Let's see. What do we have next? Okay. Here's another one. Let's talk about this one. Uh, that's actually uh, called the uh, Market Day, uh, Market Day 4. Uh, this was me trying to kind of reminisce back in uh, when I was a child in Jamaica. Uh, we actually had uh, on Saturdays there was market uh, market day, uh, people uh, taking stuff to the market. I remember going to the market with my aunt when I was very young, uh -huh. uh, picking up some stuff. And that's kind of what it is. These are three people um, carrying something on their uh, head. Uh -huh. uh, they had the one person in the real back here. There's actually four people. Uh, you can't really see it. Uh, because it's a lot better up close, but that uh -huh. person is actually carrying a bunch of banana uh -huh. at the very end there. Wow. And uh, this, this was one of my favorite one because I've created uh, Market Day 1, Market Day 2, Market Day 3, and this is actually Market Day 4. <laughs> so you have quite a few of those. Um, you have a special gift, or else, says Cheryl. Welcome, Cheryl Beckford-Scott. Nice to have you here. You have a special gift. Do, do, do you see yourself as, do you see yourself as uh, having a gift? Well, to be honest with you, I, at first I, I remember trying to teach a couple of people how to make it uh, because I always wanted to make sure that I can pass this on to people. Some people are, uh, they're a little afraid that they might cut their fingers. I remember one lady pulled my hand to see if I had any cuts in it. Wow. Um, but to be honest with you, it's, it's just a feel. It's, it's like people making uh, things out of shells. Uh, this is just kind of looking at the pieces and seeing that piece that will fit. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. So I, I, the more and more I'm doing it, the more and more uh, I feel good. I, I do sell most of my pictures out of state, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, most of my supporters are out of state. 
And most of my supporters are people that I've known for many years, to be honest with you. Yeah, you know, but, actually, I think you might have had one of your uh, supporters uh, was a sort of flyer and was intended to come in here. Um, I forgot his name, um, but you might... Hmm. Anyway, it, it, maybe it'll come back to me. Have, I have a quick question. Well, Tina has a question for you. Okay. And I think I know the answer, but can he remake each piece? Can you remake uh, a piece? You can never make redo a piece, and that's the whole thing about it. Uh, I've had some pieces that I tried to make a similar piece, and it never came out the same way. Uh, these pieces are... Uh, I don't care what technology you have, you cannot really duplicate any of these pieces. Right. And I, I think that there are some pieces I fall more in love with than others because when it's all said and done, I know I'll never be able to make it again. Right. So, so every piece is unique. That's what's, that's every, what's the beauty. Every piece is different. And I'll be honest with you, uh, the satisfaction I get is uh, the talking point when I hear people talking about it. Uh, like, what is that? How did you make it? Uh, because it's different. This is something totally different than all the art out there. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And that's, that's why I feel confident in what I'm doing because I know it's different. Yeah. yeah. I know uh, during these times of Corona, uh, people are sitting around their house and they're like, be honest with you. Uh, let me say this before I say that. Uh, people are buying more art than they used to before the Corona. Uh. <laughs> So good. So you you're actually uh, coming out of this in a in a better shape. Than- well, uh, not necessarily for me because I've been doing the research. I'm not to that level yet. I mean, uh, I am I am almost I'm kind of tiptoeing as I go along, and uh, but I do know for a fact that art uh, people and not everybody can afford art. To be honest with you. Uh-huh. Uh, my art is always very reasonable, and I don't really push my art like I should. Right. I'm very lazy, basical. You know, if you like it, you like it, but I don't follow up on people and trying to say, well, why don't you get this? Right. I think if they want to get it, they're going to appreciate it, and I feel better. Yeah. And that's the way I deal with it. It's okay. it's like a hobby slash business. Right. And if, if I had to depend on me selling art, I'd be outside shaking the cup. <laughs> <laughs> But, it's, more, um, it's more of a love. It's more of a love uh, thing at the definitely, moment. But, definitely. but again, it's still in its infancy. It's only, like you said, a year and a half. That's right. And uh, you got to remember, it's, it's, it's kind of evolving. evolving. Uh, I, I remember selling a piece to one person, and in about two months, I came up with another piece, and they wanted to exchange it. for the, <laughs> You know, so... I run into, I run into, I sometimes I see the difference of the pieces I made a year ago uh-huh. from where I have it now. And I'm taking more time because I get very excited when I'm doing it. Sometimes <laughs> it's going there. And sometimes I mess up the piece because I, I try to add something I shouldn't add. Oh, and right. then I look at it and say, oh my God, I just go ahead and, you know, whatever. But it's, okay. it's, it's, it's fun. It's good. That's good. Uh, Paula Paula was just saying, uh, I really, really love your work. My walls have been graced. My sis and brother uh, brother love your work as well. So uh, people people are loving it. Uh, Let's see. um, Chanaka, love it. African Caribbean five strong. That piece of the three uh, of the three Cari- uh, of the four people. That's the African Caribbean style she's referring to, I believe. Okay. Let's take a look at some more. Um, but I love the comments. Uh, so awesome. Love that, says Jenny. Awesome. I like that one, says uh, Tina. Beautiful. Okay. All right. Let's see. Uh, let's see what's st- uh, Dave. It's oh, was it Dave Anderson? It was. I think it was Dave Anderson that was tuned in last night, and he said he was gonna ch- he was gonna um, look at the show, watch the show. Is yes, Dave. Dave Anderson is um, actually Dave Anderson is my brother, stepbrother, uh, down there in a Calo in a Carol of Florida, oh. and he's been a very big supporter. I mean, okay. that part of Florida been. Uh, they've, he's been really helping me out, and uh, I really appreciate it. But Dave Anderson, he's he's really uh, okay. he's really appreciative, and he have a lot of my work. To be honest with you, he mm-hmm. have more work than my sister have. So <laughs> we're, going to, we're going back and forth with this. Welcome, da- Dave. Um, good to have you with us today. Um, so nice to have you with us. Tina says, I guess he can take a picture 
of each piece maybe remake with hard plastic just a suggestion she's trying to she's trying to give you some encouragement <laughs> um oral has a, a very special and unique uh, thing that he's doing right now so we'll, we'll see <laughs> well let's take a look at a few more okay here we go again um bear with you a second here it is let's get rid of this uh, comment here <clears throat> Welcome Steve Barrow. How how you doing, sir? Welcome Marlon Marlon Burrell. Welcome you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we're talking with Aurel Ferguson, who is the artist here of Uncut Glass. Talk about this one a little bit. Uh well actually this is a, a family of um it's the mother with her two boys and her girl. Uh, the reason why I created this one, I've been getting, a, I used to do the mother with two boys and a girl. I mean, I used to have more girls than boys. This one is actually two boys and a girl. Uh -huh. And uh, they, they're actually, the, the mother and the, um, the daughter have on, uh, this is actually reflecting back in Jamaica because these are the colors in the dresses. Uh, you see in the green, black, and gold in the mother's yes. dress. And in the uh, little girl in the back, uh, she also have those colors. Uh, this was um, this was one of my favorites, and um, this is actually a reflection back on the families. I used to do a lot more family pictures, uh -huh. and that's why uh, this one here uh, was created. And to be honest with you, I, I did actually name this particular picture. I named this picture the Scott's family. <laughs> the Scott family. Is that Paula Scott's family? <laughs> I, it, it could be. It could be. <laughs> cool, cool. That's mine per request. <laughs> oh, good, good. Is Wayne here? I think we, we have Wayne here. There's a lot of people that I can't see, but uh, welcome to everybody. We're talking with Oral J. Ferguson, the artist who is the artist of Uncut Glass. And um, very, very unique, very different style of art. Now, let's talk about the painting part of it, because there's the glass, but there's also paint. Um, could you just describe your, your, style, your style of paint? Well, to be honest with you, uh, after I left Kenny's Shoes, I opened up my own dyeable, uh, bridal shoe store. And uh, we used to dye a lot of shoes for the brides and the bridesmaids. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where I learned my colors from. Um, I, 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 you know, the process of making these pictures actually start from me first picking out the frame that I like. I used to be in love with frames even before I started making pictures. I love frames. I've gotten away from a lot of the gaudy frames because I used to use a lot of gaudy frames when people used to say, you know what, I like the picture, but I don't like the frame. Uh -huh. So now I kind of see me streamlining, getting a little more, you know, up to date with what they're watching and all that yes, stuff. Yes. And uh, in the background, I actually um, figure out the background, the frame, uh, before I put that picture in it. So it's a process of laying out the, the, the background, making sure I have the frame that I want, even before I put the uh, particular uh, picture in that um, frame itself. Um, the, the colors, I use a lot of acrylic. I use a lot of spray paint. I use, I use combination of a lot of different paints in terms of even the, the background, in terms of the roughage. Uh, I don't know if anybody ever went to Home Depot and see some of those stuff that you put in the wall to fill in a hole. So I actually um, <laughs> fill in, I, you know, I create a different type of mosaic before I paint over that. And then I put the glass there. Not on all pictures, but most right. of them. Right. Done. So there's there's some there's some layers to it. There's some te there's some texture to it. It's not a flat type of uh, image. Right. I just love some texture. I just yeah. love having you know. I and I think sometimes uh, it it brings the picture out a lot more when you have a little bit of texture. You have a little bit of, you know what I'm saying. I yeah, try to yeah, make it absolutely. I understand the the di the di dynamics to it. We have a question from Jenny. She said, okay. How do you break the glass you use now to make the pictures? Obviously, the, when, it, when you first did it, it broke. But how do you break the glass now? Well, that's a very good question. I think when I first started out, I used to, you know, pick up little pieces of mirrors and, you know, try to do that. But now 
I actually, um, you know, get a big bag and I actually break it with a hammer now. Okay. And I know sometimes it's, you know, it's people uh, think that's kind of why would you break up a piece of glass? But be honest with you, sometimes you look at a stained glass that's already cracked. There's nothing you can do with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's kind of repurposing, if you ask me. And that's kind of what I'm doing. Okay. And uh, I, I was actually talking with a friend today, and uh, and I told him that I was talking. I'm going to be talking with somebody who uh, does uncut glass art. You know. And he said, "Well, aren't you afraid of seven years bad luck?" <laughs> uh, to be honest with you, I've I've heard that. I've heard. Um, you know, the superstitions and stuff. If if I if I believe in all those superstition, I'll be out of business today. Uh, I look at the future. I look at modern things. I look at you know, I don't get into superstition. I don't get into uh, this art is just totally different. It's a it's a talking point. It's you know, I if you put if you look at some of the pictures that even I have around my home, uh, when people visit me, they're like you know, it it, it there's a lot of questions. And um, some people think it's it's so expensive because some of them really stands out. You would think you're in, I don't know what word to use here, but I try to I try to um, make sure that each piece uh, make a statement. Okay. Now I wanted to just acknowledge uh, Michelle Michelle McLean. Welcome, <laughs> Michelle. Good to have you here. She said hi, Melissa and Aurel. Great seeing you both. Good to have you here, Michelle. And um, Paula is claiming like every one of them, it seems. <laughs> um, uh, good to have you guys. Jas loves it. Cats out of the bag. Oh, let's see. Love it. Love it. You got a lot of support here. Um, let's see. It will be on my wall soon as well, says Paula. Name it and claim it. All right. Let's go and look at a few more. Chinaka says uh, depth. Depth when we're talking about the different layers, yeah, absolutely. So creative, says Marlon. It's good to have you guys, and I love your comments. Keep on, keep on making comments, uh, and keep on sharing. Um, sure. Michelle says, Oral Ferguson is so talented, one of a kind, absolutely. Jenny says, Excellent, excellent. Um, and Faye, ooh, love the Scots family artwork. Or J. Ferguson, uncut glass. You're amazing and most definitely have a God-given gift. Bless you, she says. Let's take a look at the next one. This one here. Yeah, that was, uh, that was uh, created um, uh, for Father's Day uh, last year, matter of fact. Oh. Uh, this is a father and his daughter, and this is before I even start using uh, any type of uh, stained glass. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I was getting ready to do a little video outside in the backyard, and I wanted to make one for Father's Day. And I remember walking with my daughter, and that's how this one was created. And it's strictly um, strictly from broken mirrors. Broken mirrors. Do you do you only work with m broken mirrors, or do you work with broken, just regular broken glass? That's not that's not a, a mirror type of. You know. uh, I only work with mirrors and stained glass. I and stain glass. I haven't um, I haven't ventured off into any other glass other than a mirror, uh -huh. uh, and I I got I fell in love with the mirrors because of the reflection. Yeah, I remember one of my earlier pictures I made. And I put it on the wall and the, the light was kind of off and I looked at it and it's all oh my, my goodness. I'm like, I said, did I really do that? So I kind of, I kind of get excited because of the reflection of that mirror. And how, how long does it typically take for you to make one or is that, or is it just, ver does it vary too much? Well, I, I think uh, there are sometimes uh, when I'm in it, I can do one in a week. Um, sometimes it takes two weeks. I uh, remember doing one in three days. Oh, okay. uh, it, it, it all depends on the adrenaline. Sometimes I rush and I can't wait to complete it. And uh, sometimes I wish I kind of step back. Now I step back a little bit more than I used to because I find that uh, the detail is a lot better than Russian. I remember sometimes I go outside and drink a beer and stuff. And I've created some pictures. I look at the next day and I say, I know I didn't do that one. Wow. Because it's like, you know, 
so I, I have fun doing them. I really have fun. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, what are the size dimensions of your art artwork pieces? Your artwork artwork. I go from anywhere from twelve by twelve to thirty six by thirty six. I I remember going to a couple of um, not art shows, but I was invited to a few venues, and there were people that had money. But guess what? My picture is too. They were too small. That's why I couldn't sell anything. They wanted like 50 times 50, you know, right. and uh, because they have these huge homes and they wanted pictures real big. But I try to stay within that. Um, I try to stay within that, uh, you know, uh, 18 by 24. That's kind of what I stay within. OK. All right. Has anybody ever asked you to to produce a picture uh, like, um, you know what I mean? Like uh, especially for them. Uh, yes, I've actually done a couple. I've actually done a couple. And, um, you know, uh, in terms of commission work, I get a little bit scared because uh, the glass is not something that you're going to see Miss America. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the glass is, is very, you know, it's it, it comes out a lot differently. So it's, you have to be very careful about commission work uh -huh. when it comes down to this work, right. because a person would say, can you make me uh, walk it at the beach with my dog? You know, and, you know, uh, me sitting there trying to pick out pieces that look like a dog when the person see it, they might have a German shepherd and I make a, make a little fool. <laughs> and it, and it's, That's not what and I wanted. It, <laughs> so I, you have to be really careful. But I have done a couple of pieces and the people have actually purchased it. Oh. And one person actually told me, they said, I want you to create something. I don't know what it is, but it may, when it comes to you, you yeah. just go ahead and do it. Okay. And then I, I, I try to figure out the person and what they yeah. want. And I end up making something and I shipped it and they were satisfied. So, but it's something that you still have to be kind of, kind of leery. Because you have to really yeah. make this, the pieces speak to you. When, when you see the pieces, that's when you start to generate, right? Is that how, is that how it comes? That is so true because I remember sometimes going out there to make a picture and I sit there for half an hour and nothing is coming to me. <laughs> and I remember you need to be inspired. <laughs> I remember laying in the bed two o'clock in the morning and, um, you know, something came to me and I went out there and created something. So it's all in the field. Right. And this is a, this is another COVID one, I think. Yeah, this is a COVID one. This is a mother uh, protecting her daughter from COVID. Mm, uh, this okay. one. This one here, I, I was very, I was very happy with the background, the frame, and everything. And they both have on a mask. You might not be able to see that, but this was created with um, two people with a mask. The little daughter and the actual mother had a, a mask on. Wow! And uh, it, you know, a lot of these pictures, you have to see them up closer because yeah. sometimes I send people a picture and it's like you know. But when you see them up close, it's a totally different ball game. So yeah. that's kind of where we at with that. Cool, cool. Yeah. Um, so I think we had another question. Did I see another question in there? Uh, 12 by 12 and 36 by 36, uh, 18 by 24 inches right, inches not feet. In inches not feet, she says. Uh, inches. Oh, feet would be way out there, big as my house. Yeah, we would say actually inches on that. It's inches, but do you, but do you have quite a lot around your house? I mean, do, it, it, uh, your house, is your house starting to look like a gallery now? <laughs> uh, yes, I I uh, I have about maybe I would say forty five pieces here right now, uh -huh. and, and uh, you know I was able to um, you know with the COVID I was running out of you know not being able to I end up um, taking some out some of my early pieces just to use the frames. Uh -huh. But um, right now I'm at about 45 and I will be coming out with two new pieces next week. I've been working on those for the last couple of weeks. So I haven't really been releasing on uh, Facebook. You usually see my pictures. I usually yeah. make a, a video. Yeah. I've been kind of, you know, kind of consolidating and waiting for my, uh, my, my website to be completed. I have that being outsourced okay. and that website should be up and running. I would say actually, uh, uh, from what I heard, uh, next weekend. 
Okay. Uh, so most people that know me will see my work on uh, Facebook. Uh, they can actually go to Instagram, which is uh, Ferguson Oro, uh -huh. and, uh, you know, look at all the pieces. Not all of them, but most yeah, of them there, too. Them. This one here. Um, this one here. Uh, this let, me one's a good, let me just say good night to Jenny. Good night, Jenny. Thanks for stopping by. She says, great job. Have a have a um, have to hop off. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Aurel. OK, uh, this one here, I I, I I really got excited for this one here because it was, um, you know, it's actually two people dancing. Oh. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I I got so excited that I even threw an umbrella in there. I don't know why it did, but, I, <laughs> you know, I, I, I just saw that color piece of glass sitting on the side, green uh, stained glass. And I said, hey, you know what? I'll just throw an umbrella in there. So yeah. I, I, I throw little things in there that, um, you know, I like. And uh, sometimes I wish I didn't, but this one is okay. It's very colorful. Yeah, and I, I like the Michelle likes this one. She said, "Oh, uh, that one is nice and colorful. Love it." Says Michelle. And she's a, she's also an artist. As, as well. Oh yes, I've been checking out Michelle's work. Uh, she does really really great work. Yeah. And I just wanted to say one thing that I don't forget. Uh, most of my work is actually is already framed. Uh, so you don't really, you know, a lot of people, they, they buy art and then they have to take it to somebody to get framed. And by the time they get it framed, it's, it's the, the price that they pay for framing is probably what my picture costs. You know, so I just wanted to point that out, that um, the uh, pictures are already framed, sealed, ready, and delivered with a glass. Not all of them are making a good front of front glasses on them. I just, because some of them put in the glass up front, it's, it's very tricky. Because I'm I'm getting more um, uh, dimensional now, where I'm going to be laying glass on top of glass to create right. different type of images. So uh, I, that's coming up there. Go ahead. I, I'm sorry. I, I did have a, we did have a question from Steve. If you if you if you if you if you want to, uh, what what what's uh, the price ranges, or is that uh, an off an off conversation, an off camera no, conversation? No, it's, it's not it's not off uh, conversation at all. And I'm glad that that's a great question there, uh, Steve. Uh, my prices, uh, they go from anywhere from, uh, I would say, uh, $75 to $350, so, which, is, which is pretty, pretty good. Okay. And um, I think that um, I'm making some smaller ones because some people wanted to buy my art, but they usually say, well, uh, you know, $100 is too much. So I've started out with some with $75, and it's, okay. it's within that price range. I think that's uh, reasonable. And to be honest with you, um, it's a lot of people tend to tell me that I'm selling my stuff too cheap because for the amount of time that it actually take you to make it uh -huh. and the creativity, not to mention framing, yeah, you can yeah. go to some places to get a frame and they'll charge you $150 just to frame, <laughs> uh, you know, so, you know, that you have to take all this in, in consideration. Right. That's why, you know, the market around Florida, my area, I don't really worry about it as much. And I, I kind of, you know, eventually um, I'll try to do a little bit more in the area, but um, I, I depend more on the people from out of town right. uh, to support my, my, my business. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. We have a few more to look at. So we have another COVID looking one. Yeah, this, this is one of my, uh, this is one of my favorite one. And uh, the, the reason why this one is a favorite in terms of the sky uh, that was a test I did with a sky and I was, I was able, to, I was really able to uh, feel good how that came out. And this glass, the glass is not on top of it. It's, it's like almost a half an inch that separate the glass from the picture itself, the way I had done this one. So this was one of my favorite. And, um, this is also COVID. And you know what? I, I try not to talk about, although this is a COVID, and the interpretation of this one, it could be a person, uh, it could be a warrior in battle, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Because yeah. I remember uh, a friend of mine came and uh, they saw the COVID and they said, well, you know, that's too, I don't want to really deal with that one because it, it's bad memories. I don't want uh -huh. bad memories. COVID this, COVID that, COVID right. this. Right. So you, you have to be kind of careful uh, when you're doing this, but this is for historical reasons. And yes. you know what? I'm not going to, I'm, I'm through with making them, but I wanted to do what I saw in yes. terms of yes. um, leaving these behind. Absolutely. Absolutely. So again, everybody who's just joining in, welcome. This is uh, MJ live. We're talking with 
Oral J. Ferguson, the artist responsible for uncut glass. We're having a great conversation here, and we're looking. We're having a we're having a virtual a virtual art show here, <laughs> right? That's and, it. Uh, That's okay, it. Enjoy your art, and and just you know, you you wouldn't get this at a, at a, a real art show. <clears throat> oh no, me. you wouldn't no. get this at a real art show. But here, we're able to take our time, look through the art. And, and just talk through each piece. So I, I think uh, without even really intending it to be an art show, it, it's just turned into that. <laughs> so it's good to have you here. Um, let's take a look at what Marlon said. Uh, Marlon says, um, great prices, especially when you consider the amount of work and creativity that goes into it. That's what Marlon says. Shinaka says, uh, very nice. Paula says, very affordable. And... Um, uh, interpretation is key it's uh it's personal yeah it's personal each yeah. each each item is so different so yes um, we are facing many battles it's a great reminder call it victory yeah wow you, do you do you do you name them or that you just sign them i you know i i i i name them now i actually have like maybe four basic names that i use mm -hmm. I, I used to use the Running Man. I went from Running Man 1 to Running Man 4. Uh, went from Dancing in the Moonlight 1 to Dancing in the Moonlight 4. So a lot of these, Dancing in the Sunlight, um, Market Day 1, Market Day 4. So that's kind of the theme I had. And it, it seemed like some of the customers I would show up pictures to, they would say, oh, that remind me of um, Dancing in the Moonlight. Uh, this uh, one individual back in uh, when he was at Kenny Shoes, one of the executives, uh, saw one of my pictures and he said, and he, he sent me a clip of Dancing in the Moonlight. And then ever since I had market, market um, Dancing in the Moonlight one, I start naming all the ones that I make in that family. So that's kind of where those names come so up. So it's like a, you do a, a little series of them. Yes, I do a series and they're never all the same. Yeah, um, I do. I did remember uh, market day. I think market day three was uh, raffled off at Paula Scott event. Yeah. And, um, you know, I try to get some of these out in terms of uh, not of donations, but I try to get my work out there. It's not all about the money. It's yeah. about yeah. letting people know. I think even uh, talking with Steve Burrell, he um, he was uh, hoping that his uh, kids would learn how to do this. And I said, sure, I'm ready. So. Oh. Uh, there's a lot down the pipeline that I'd like to do. All right. So you, you did mention that um, you do you you do teach, or are you planning to teach? Uh, I I used to teach, oh, and I I plan on teaching, but I think when I was uh, doing some Esau work there at the village, I was trying to teach, and some people get really scared. I mean, it's 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 almost like a culture shock when you try to. Uh, teach how to assemble these pieces of glass and how to do it. So, do, do, yeah. you, do you do you wear gloves? Do you protect? Your no, hands? I I don't wear gloves. But I would imagine when I start teaching, I'll I'll, I'll have people yes. uh, put on gloves. <laughs> Liable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I've been pretty. I've been pretty lucky. I've been pretty lucky. <laughs> um, talk about this one. This one looks like there's a lot going on here. Well, to be honest with you, there's a person in the, uh, in a sailboat. And this is a shark. A shark was coming up on the side or a big fish. Uh -huh. And there is this bird was escaping. This one here, I, I kind of, this this one here was when I was really testing a lot of the uh, glass on top of glass, uh -huh. uh, the ocean. Uh, there's a sailboat actually in the middle of this one here. Yeah. And on the, on your right, you might be like a fish. This is actually a fish I created. Uh -huh. So uh, that, you know, so it's a fish, it's a fish on the side. There's a person in the boat there, and you know uh, that symbolizes the the ocean. So there's there's this is a, another um, abstract. You know, I, I I try to interpret that to a lot of people, and they're seeing a lot of things that I'm not seeing. So right, that's just right. all that. Very interesting. Um, great interview, says uh, says says Dave. I'm glad you were able to tune in, Dave. Uh, Tina, awesome. Uh, Jenny, I'm back. Love that one. Jenny comes back. Um, I have many of his pieces, says Dave. Scott's family is unique. Am I, am I going back now? Okay. Uh, thank you, 
Thank you for all your contributions. Yes, thank you, Aurel. You actually gave one away at uh, one of my workshops, um, so I appreciate you for uh, sponsoring sponsoring that. It's 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 so generous of you. I see what you did there, says Marlon. Marlon's looking at this hard, shaking his head and looking at it from different sides now. <laughs> I can imagine Marlon looking. <laughs> um, thank you for your contributions. That's also, that's what we said. Okay. Now, we still have a couple more, one or two more. So, um, actually, I have quite a lot more. Let's, like, we're we're going to go quickly through the rest of these. Okay. Let's talk about this one. Uh, that was actually done after creating the Atlas One uh, demand. I went to an event and I was, um, as a matter of fact, it was, um, I think it was Paula Scott's um, uh, workshop. And I, I was talking to a young lady there and I was, um, I showed her a picture on my phone, but it was the Atlas man that I, you know, I had a man lifting up the world. And she mentioned to me, she said, why don't you, why, why it have to be a man? Why can't it be a lady? Uh, so I, I, I took that to heart. And uh, when I went home, after about a couple of weeks later, I created this one with a woman lifting up the world. And that's what that one is all about. It's uh, strictly stained glass. And, and, and we all know that the women have the, the world on our, sh our shoulders. <laughs> that's, that is correct. And <laughs> as, you know, as, as you know, a lot of my pictures, I, I, uh, you see a lot more women than anything. It's, <laughs> it's a lot of women in there. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think. Say, say, say hi to Lorraine for me and, and, your, and your daughter as well. Okay. Um, Michelle says, beautiful. We are the world, says Paula Scott. Uh, love the black frames too, says Faye. Mm. So, so pe people actually influence how you may do a next one when they give you the feedback. Yes. I, 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 I remember, and you know, uh, I had a friend that came, my brother-in-law, I had a friend came over and um, he, he really, really got, he, he got excited about my pictures, but he have a, um, a daughter and a son. And so uh, it seemed like he was looking for that. Uh, so that's one of my projects coming in is just to make, because all, all my pictures had the women had the mother with their kids. I never had a man except for that one Father's Day with Father, the daughter. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of what I'm going to do. But people influence what I do. That's and uh, I try to, you know, you can't, you can't do everything everybody wants, you know, right. but you try to, you try to throw one in there. And um, uh, most of the things I do is what I want to do. Right. And I still have to, you know, um, I still have to um, try to, at least come close to what people are looking for. If right. That's the right word. So we have a question from um from Faye. What was the title of that piece? The the We Are the World one, I think it was. Uh that's Atlas Lady. Atlas Lady. Okay. Yeah. And um, beautiful piece, says uh, Michelle. <clears throat> Steve would appreciate that. Uh, I think so. uh, she says, "What was that? I missed it." Steve would appreciate that. Women are the real leaders, says Paul Scott. Keep up the good work. If I break some glass, I will donate it to you to you to recycle, says uh to says Tina. Do, do, has, has, do people ever bring you glass? Uh to be honest with you, um I try not to take uh appreciate that, but I try not to take um glass uh from people because when I first started out making pictures, I used to use this real thick glass and it never really looked good on the picture when it was all said and done. So now I have to find a much more thinner glass, you know, it's, and that's what I'm doing. So I, I get glass from, you know, neighbors or whatever it is, and you, you have to appreciate it, but some of the glass is not really the glass type that I use mm -hmm. because when you're putting it in a picture, mm -hmm. You have to be careful of the, the width, not the width, but the in terms of the, the you know, if it's too thing. thick, thick. Yeah, if it's too thick, it's not going to work. Yeah. Okay. All right. We have uh, a few more to look at. I'm going to just go through those. Another Atlas one. This is Matt. Yeah, that was, Man, that, was, that, was, that was the original. Okay. That was the original Atlas one. Uh, to be honest with you, you have a backpack on his back. I don't know if you see it. 
Yeah. And uh, I remember watching some NBA games and I saw all these NBA players having on different tennis shoes. I said, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to put on, I'm going to, I'm on this Atlas one, I'm going to have two different color shoes. And that's kind of where that came from. That's but it's so actually cool. a, a backpack. Yeah. That's, this is one of my favorite ones. I actually have this in a frame now. And okay. uh, it was, um, you know, I like how it came up. Yeah. Speaking, speaking of father and daughter piece, uh, Speaking of the father and daughter piece for Steve. Steve is one of the most active fathers I know. And Steve is actually running for um, a, a position in office for uh, in the education field. Um, I don't remember exactly what it is. Just remind us what, you, what you're running for, Steve, uh, since we're here. Let's go on to the next one, which is, uh, what's this one? Looks like somebody with a bird. Well, you know what? To be honest with you, this was intended when it first I first made it. Was uh, I remember when I was in Jamaica as a kid? I used to see these people. I don't know how they did it, but they were always carrying iron on their heads. You know, just walking, oh. and it was actually intended for a person carrying iron. But people say they're seeing a plane. People say they're seeing a bird. Uh, people have seen all these different things. But it was intended for a person carrying a lot of pieces of iron. Uh, the, the, the middle of this uh, picture is actually, behind it is actually the sun. Mm. And that's why it's not really a part of the person, but that's the way it came out. But mm. um, this, this, was, um, this was one of those pictures that um, it was intended for that person carrying um, a lot of iron on his head. Got you, got you. What about this one? Yeah, this one here was a lot of comedy in this one. This... <laughs> This one here, um, you know, it, I, 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 I wanted a person riding, I think, a, a big bird. And then I kind of threw it out there. This is, be, be honest with you, this one is, uh, the body is nothing but stained glass, white stained glass. And um, it ended up being like a turkey. Some people, I think uh, uh, Marion said he saw like an ostrich. Uh -huh. Somebody said swimming on the sea. So, uh -huh. you know, so. This was open to your own interpretation, and this was just something I just wanted to do yeah, uh, because yeah. it represents so many different um, birds. Okay. I think we saw this one already, so I'm going to skip oh, yeah. past this one. Uh, this one now. Now, remember, I was always speaking about these Market Day 1, Market Day 2, Market Day 3, and Market right. Day 4. This is actually the Market Day 3. Uh -huh. uh, you know, you see that person in the in the middle could be uh, could be the mother carrying a big basket. Uh -huh. uh, it could be a little child in the, uh, in front there carrying yeah. something on his head, and this person actually is carrying a, a bunch of bananas, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one is market day three. Uh, you know, reminiscing back in uh, when I was a child in Jamaica, Port Antonio, mm -hmm. and um, you know, seeing my aunt there at the uh, going to the market mm -hmm. to uh, get some vegetables. I like the framing of this one. I like the way how it's positioned. Yeah, this one is a ballerina. Yeah. Uh, for some reason, I I started out making a lot. And this is the ballerina four. I think uh -huh. this is, yeah, this is the ballerina four. Uh, when I was a child and I, I came to the States and I, I looked at TV and I think I first saw like a ballerina tippy-toeing on her toes. Uh -huh. I said, how did they do that? And then yeah. it was so elegant. Uh -huh. So I always, I, I, to be honest with you, uh, this is the only ballerina I have left. Um, all the ballerinas have been sold out. Nice. And I've made, I've made four of them, and um, this one is the only one left because so this is not going to last too long. Someone's going to pick this up. It looks, it looks really <laughs> nice. It looks really nice. We have a Thank question. You. Another question. Uh, at what age did you start creating these pieces and what inspired you to become an artist? So she came in late because we talked about this. <laughs> you can repeat it, though. OK, I, I started, uh, I would say, probably 20 years ago. I was I, you know, I was doing it as a hobby. I made a I made a couple and, um, you know, I, I didn't do any more for 20 years. I started uh, doing it seriously, uh, actually. Um, last year mm -hmm. early last year mm -hmm. when um you know uh i keep uh, visiting maryland and uh my sister keep telling me that the piece i gave her and to be honest with you the piece i gave her the person that lived beside her used to be a collector this person used to uh throw parties for artists mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And she used to they she, she used to sell out of her house, but this was a little more upscale. Mm -hmm. And she fell in love with a piece that my sister had, mm -hmm. and they keep bothering me every year I went there. So uh, last year when I came back, I said, "Well, I need to get back to work. I need to do something." I just say, "Well, you know, I'm going to go out buy some material," and that's kind of how I started back up again. So yeah, so. Just about a year and a half ago is when you got really into it and you've been consistent ever since, right? Yes. Okay. All right. So um, we had a big um, – thanks for sharing, says Michelle. Michelle Moore, I, I believe that you guys may be doing some sort of collaborations together. Um, yes. Thanks for sharing uh, your talent or are very creative, says Michelle. And uh, Chinaka, art and creativity is open to interpretation. That is beauty, for sure, for sure, for sure. Marlon Burrell, hello, my dear, says Michelle. All right, let's see. I think we have one or two more. We have, Oh, yeah, this is a pretty cool one. This is a pretty cool one. Oops. Yes. Um, that one there uh, is actually a person uh, cutting coconut on a coconut tree. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this was um, strictly stained glass. No, the machete was actually... A piece of uh, broken mural, yeah. And uh, yeah. that one there, um, I kind of like how this one came out. Yeah, it was a little different, and uh, you know, it, it don't have to be coconut. It could be another fruit, but uh, it, it's it's recognizable based on uh, the way it was done. Right. Very very good. Very good. Um, Faye, wow, 20 years ago and only recently resumed your artistry a year and a half ago. Yep. Uh, welcome, Sharon Stewart. Good to have you, my dear. Very creative. And love this one, says Chidaka. So, I believe that is our, our, um, our show, guys. If you would love to connect with Oral, his information is as follows. Phone number 954-446-4151. And Oral, go ahead and tell us where people can find you on social media. Um, actually, I'm on uh, Facebook. Uh, Facebook, you can actually, um, you know, type in my name and I'll go ahead and uh, accept you there. And uh, Instagram is probably where you're going to see most of my pictures. Instagram is just my name backwards. It's Ferguson Oral. And if you do that, you'll be able to see that. And uh, coming up very soon, I would say later on next week, you'll see my website. And website is really easy because it's going to be uncutglasspictures.com. Yeah. Uh, remember, the cut is uh, two T's instead of one T, uh, C-U-T-T dot com. Right. And that's kind of where it is. Um, uh, thanks for everybody that's tuning in. And, uh, you know, uh, Ms. Luck, thanks for having me. Of course, it's my pleasure. Um, Marcia Demers, welcome, Marcia. She says, a real treat. Who would have thought you would have had a virtual art show today with the very uh, talented artist, Oral J. Ferguson, here? Thank you so much, Oral, for, for, you know, for showing us your art and for just, you know, telling us, walking us through it in, in, in such a you know, create in a creative manner because, you know, looking at pictures and then hearing the story behind them, it just adds another dimension. So when people see them now, they'll be like, mm, that's the uh, the woman with the atlas or that's the uh, the man with, with, his, with his child. You know, it'll just add a little bit more, more, more the, the story behind it. Yeah. All right, Aurel. So I think I'm going to say good night for now. And Thank you so much. Yes. Yeah, have a good night, Miss we're going to come back. We're going to cut off from this time and we're going to come back in about five minutes and have our musical show and a little bit of technology as well. So people don't go too far. Thanks again, Oral Ferguson. You're welcome. Have a good night. Have a good night.